Hey there team, Geology Professor Sean Wilsey here. It's been a month or so since we last talked about that seismic swarm in the month of July 2025 that was occurring near Mount Rainier. And there's some new data and analysis that I wanted to share with you. So we're going to circle back to that topic, that earthquake swarm around Mount Rainier, and discuss things a little bit. Thanks for joining me. Uh, again, I'm Geology Professor Sean Wilsey. Today is August 14th, 2025. So it's been a month or so since I've done an update on this event. If you remember, just as a bit of a refresher here, we had a swarm of earthquakes that began around Mar Mount Rainier on July 8th. Uh, that peaked at about 30 or so earthquakes per hour on average. So that's that July 8th was more or less the peak of the event. Um, overall, a total number of quakes for the past month or so is over 1300 earthquakes uh, some up to magnitude 2.4 but most very small none of these quakes were actually felt so these are very small earthquakes all happening about two to six kilometers below the summit about a mile and a half down to four miles down in terms of depth and now we're just seeing basically one to two per day so this seismic swarm has definitely decreased over the past few weeks and again just to reiterate the earthquake swarm has um, no bearing on you know any sort of impending eruption or whatever. We saw no ground deformation associated with this event. We saw no anomalous changes in gas concentrations or gas emissions. Uh, no other data to suggest anything is going on beneath the volcano that warrants any significant concern. Um, so here's just a simple, the just aggregating all those quakes beneath the summit there. If they're in gray, they're older than a month old. The white ones are within the last month or so, and the yellow ones are within the last week. So you can see the, the bulk of those quakes are in that gray or white color there. But you can see the tight clustering, and of course, earthquake swarm is defined as having um, an anomalous number of earthquakes in a very short time period. So when you have a, a spike or a rapid increase in the frequency of earthquakes, within a relatively short time period and also geographically clustered to one area. That is what we sometimes refer to as a seismic swarm. So there's sort of the USGS data. Um, I went through some of this last time, but the, there were some nice little graphs and maps that were put together. So here's another map showing all those located earthquakes um, and then a cross section showing the, the mountain profile there, the summit region and then all those earthquakes, recognizing that sometimes we have some difficulty uh, locating the very shallow earthquakes. You kind of see there's a bit of a cap on the earthquakes there. That's because some of those uh, really shallow ones are a little bit trickier to locate, and so it just tends to have a, a, a specific uh, depth for some of those quakes. Um, there's your frequency. So there's everything kind of peaking on July 8th, and you can see the, the larger magnitudes, you know, 2.4, that was the biggest one we... we we uh, had or measured and then over the subsequent days and weeks the or excuse me the earthquakes uh, dying down quite a bit here's the number of events per hour so it peaked at around 41 or so p events per hour that very first day uh, and then it kind of tailed off and so you can see that that decline uh, th that looks at the depth there so this is depth of those earthquakes uh, the size of the circle corresponds to the magnitude and you can see the, that distribution there as well. And so the main thing, the main re, main reason I wanted to put this update together was there was uh, some great information from the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. Let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger and share some of the information they had here. So they did add some information at the end of the month and early in August, kind of clarify things a little bit. And so I thought these would be fun to share with you as well. So you can see. And so big kudos and shout out to um, the hardworking folks at the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. But here you can see, again, total number of quakes, uh, detections per six hours. So you can see how high that spiked initially when we had the earthquakes, um, you know, that July 8th or so. A lot of earthquakes detected uh, initially and then it dying down to some degree. Um, this is what I found kind of interesting here. So they actually were able to plot up uh, beach balls for a lot of the, the earthquakes. So looking at the um, the way that those earthquakes moved and broke, how they shifted, allows us to um, reproduce uh, the, the fault dynamics or the fault uh, geometries responsible for those earthquakes. And what you see here in looking at those nine beach balls, if you've been following the beach balls with me, and I know you have, um, is it's kind of helter-skelter, right? There's not like a specific... A fault 
trend or uh, orientation. We've got faults here that kind of go north, south, east, west. Here, you know, northeast, southwest, northwest, south. I mean, there's all sorts of different fault geometries here. Uh, and there's also different fault types. So we've got quite a few strike slip faults, but we've got here a normal fault over here. Um, so there doesn't seem to be any specific consistency, at least at first glance at that. And that should make sense, right? This was not a seismic swarm caused by one master fault system. This was a whole bunch of very small, I guess we could call them like micro faults that were, that were failing and producing small, very small earthquakes all clustered in a tight area there uh, so you can see just kind of the the distribution of those here um, no real rhyme or reason to uh, the way these earthquakes kind of played out so a little different um, look than what we see with like you know bigger earthquake events where we have like a main shock and then aftershocks we see a specific a fault or structure that's responsible for all, all those earthquakes but here where we have these earthquakes um, mainly caused by fluid movement, uh, hydrothermal fluids beneath the volcano. We're seeing lots of different faults, and these tiny faults here that are that are failing and producing these earthquakes. Um, we'll skip that diagram there, but then this one here is kind of interesting. This is basically uh, doing a little bit better job of plotting up the earthquake locations, so using some more precise methods to figure out the location of the earthquakes, and then the color corresponds to um, when those occurred. So you can see like the kind of purples and blues. I guess the blues here would be around July 8th. As you get into the greens, that's later in the month. Yellows are a little bit later. And then the reds. And so this is a map view looking down. This is latitude, longitude, essentially here, grid. And so what you can see here is that there is a little bit of a, a somewhat of a distribution of some of those quakes. There's kind of this cluster over here, this blob that looks like it follows a bit of a north-south trend. So there might be structures in this region that dominantly run north-south that kind of um, led to this distribution of earthquakes. There's also another bit of a cluster over here that has more of a northwest-southeast trend. So there might be some uh, structures or faults in that region that were responsible for some of those earthquakes. And then over here to kind of the north, it's it's more diffuse, right? It's not as tightly clustered or concentrated. It's just a bit more uh, scattered over a region here. So it's hard to pick out any sort of linear trends in the data there. But I thought that was kind of interesting there, just these uh, improvements in looking at the, um, the precision locations of some of these quakes and really dialing in exactly where they occurred and then seeing if in aggregate, looking at all the quakes, there's some sort of relationship to look at there. Um, so I'll put posts or links to all these under the video description if you want to look at these in a little bit more detail. There's, of course, more information here. Um, and then they kind of go back to uh, an earlier post from July 18th, plotting up uh, the earthquakes beneath the mountain, another cross-section view there. Um, this is looking at uh, time and depth, so just basically each day how deep those earthquakes were. You can see a lot of clustering here, about two kilometers below the summit initially on July 8th, and then they were sort of in this uh, region, maybe from about a kilometer or so beneath the summit down to maybe three kilometers down, just more or less in here, with a few shallow and a few deeper ones as well. And then this is a plot of the cumulative number of earthquakes in the swarm. So you can see it kind of kick up, um, lots of earthquakes initially, and then you can see this bit of a, of a exponential curve as things kind of started to tail off. And now we're kind of up in this region here, actually well beyond this, because this only goes to July 18th, but things are starting to tail off and, and level off quite a bit there. So anyway, so uh, just a quick update on the swarm at Mount Rainier. If you maybe remember that and were wondering kind of where that was at or uh, obviously, if you're not hearing things in the news and media, then likely there's not as much going on. Uh, but I'll put links to all this information under the video description. We'll keep watching this uh, volcano in this area, along with other parts of the Northwest, the Cascades, Hawaii, Iceland, some of our usual spots that we, we check on. So thanks again for your attention, and we'll see you next time. Take care.